we can get the same amount of insight for less code as compared to using straight Python. The pandas using the data frame abstraction also improves processing performance for common analytics processing steps. Pandas provides our syntax for data science and Jupyter provides a way to visualize our data to see the results of that data along the way. This is helpful because you don't need to go back and change the way your data is compiled at different points. Jupyter will let you do that. Finally, Treasure Data solves the data access problem. You can think of Treasure Data as a universal data connector, enabling you to connect to any number of disparate data sources, each with unique formats, schemas, and query methods. Pull the data out of them, query that data using something as familiar as SQL, and finally export the result into any other format for visualization for further analytics or so forth. You can also let your data reside solely in Treasure Data Storage Cloud or use Treasure Data as your primary data source. So are we ready for a demo? What we're going to do is we're going to set up our Treasure Data API key. We're going to install Jupyter, Pandas, and the Pandas TD connector. We're going to run Jupyter, create our first notebook, we will explore our data and we will sample our data. So the very first thing that I want to show you is you need to get a Condas installation. And the best place to get that installation is from here. Uh, Conda, PyData.org, Mini Conda. You want to take the installation that's actually relevant to the platform you're running on. So if it's 64-bit Windows, 64-bit Mac, or 64-bit Linux, or 32-bit in any case, download it and install it according to the instructions. So that's the first thing you want to do. The next thing you're going to want to do is set up a, a Treasure Data API key. And this is done by basically running an export command at the command line. So I'm going to show you how to do that. In fact, I've already done. First off, I guess I should show you where you get the API key from. So let's go back and let's look at Treasure Data Console here. If we go to Treasure Data Console, you've signed up, you've got your Treasure Data account, you go into your profile, and then from your profile, um, you'll enter your password and you hit Show Keys. And the, the key that you're interested in is going to be your master API key. Now, I'm not going to show you this here for obvious reasons, but that's how you would get it, right? So let's go back. Then you're going to write a simple export command. So if I show you, it's going to look basically like this. Um, 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 you could do, for example, like this. Um, and then in quotes, you're going to have the string that is your API key. So the command is going to look something like this, right? Now, I've already entered mine and stored it. Um, so I've installed Condas. I've got my Treasure Data account up. I've installed my API key. So let's look at actually creating um, a virtual Python environment in which to run our IPython notebook. So the first command is going to be conda create minus n. And we want Python version 3, right? So we're going to hit this. We want to install the dependencies when it prompts us, so we'll do that. Great. We've created an environment called analysis, so let's activate it. And now this shows that we're running in our analysis virtual environment, right? So we'll want to install a few more dependencies before we get going. So we're going to install pandas using the conda install command. Um, we're going to install matplotlib, which is basically our plotting library. Again, we say yes to all the dependencies. Um, clear that out to get a full screen. Um, lastly, we're going to install IPython Notebook. This will give us some more dependencies we need. So we take those. 
and then we're good to go. Almost. Um, we also need to uh, install some general Python libraries, which is pandas td. That is our pandas treasure data connector. So let's do pip install pandas td. Great. So now we've got all of our dependencies available to run. And let's create our first notebook. So from our analysis environment, which you've just set up, we type ipython notebook. And this is going to open in a web browser. As I said before, this is a web application. It's running locally on our machine. And this is actually browsing my, my whole directory structure here, so never mind that. What we're going to do is we're going to create a new IPython notebook. So we just go to New. We go to Python 3. And now we've created a new notebook. And you see that we have our first cell open and ready to take commands.